David said in Psalm 121, verse 1 through 2, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. This is the confession of a great king who had all things, wealth, wisdom, fame, and subjects at his disposal. Plus, he had many victories to his name, having fought and won battles on several occasions. Yet, he refused to rely on his strength and instead confessed openly that his help came from God. How is it that most of us hardly think of God when faced with situations of life? How come we find it easy to trust in our parents, siblings, friends, relatives, and other people than in God? Who has promised to give all things into our possessions? Why do we run to God at the last minute instead of involving Him from the beginning? Well, there might be several reasons for our lack of faith in God. First is that He has not become real to us. Most people tend to believe in things they can physically see, touch and handle. To them, seeing is believing in anything short of this makes it difficult to have faith. However, that is where we differ as believers. Everything we have and believe is literally on the basis of our faith. Without faith, Christianity is as good as non-existent. Hebrews 11 verse 3 says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Even God has to function using the instrument of faith. How much more we, who are created in His image and likeness. Just think about it. While you were under the care of your parents, especially as a child, did you have to worry about what to eat, what to wear, how the house rent or your school fees were going to be paid? Even when you ran into trouble at school or in your neighborhood, despite the fear of being scolded, you always knew deep down in your heart that your parents would definitely rescue you and get you out of that trouble. Such faith. This is because your parents were real to you and not just figments of your imagination or some fairy tales you were told or watched on TV. You lived with them, interacted with them and had a real experience with them. So you can easily run to them and call on them when you are in need or get into trouble of any kind. This is the kind of relationship God wants us to have with Him as His children. He does not want us to worship Him from afar or see Him as a deity who cannot be approached. When Christ died, He broke down the wall of petition and called us to deeper fellowship with God, is our Father. The invitation has been extended, but it is up to us to either accept or reject it. While God is inviting us into the wealth of His kingdom, many choose instead to stay at the edge and behave like a stranger in the house of their Father. Just as real as the breath in your nostrils, so is God your Father. When faced with any situation, do not think twice about it before calling on God. He loves to hear your voice. He loves to know that you trust Him and totally rely on Him. According to the book of Isaiah, God promised that before you call on Him, He will hear you, and while you are yet speaking, will answer. That is to show how eager God is to bless our lives. He wants to give us everything we need and desire and has made provision for every need even before it arises. But the ball is in your court. Do you really believe in the existence of God? Remember those fairy tales and superhero movies that we watched? It is okay to watch, dream and fantasize about their existence. You might have even dreamed about becoming one one day. When you get into real trouble, say you are being robbed at gunpoint, do you think of Spider-Man 
Superman or the Justice League. So, when faced with situations, instead of looking up to God, we think of him as another superhero or fairy tale in our minds and we seek out methods of helping ourselves or look to mere men easily fail. What you have to do is have a real relationship with God. Spend more time with Him until He becomes as real as life to you. Acknowledge Him as your Father and go to Him with every problem of your life, even the seemingly insignificant ones. We see this in the life of David as expressed in the Psalms he wrote. Whether he was happy, sad, troubled, depressed, joyful or confused, he was constantly communing with God. Despite the gap between God and the people in those days, he shared a special relationship with God, such that God himself called him a man after his own heart. Make God your father, a close friend and ally, one you can look up to in any circumstance of life. It is one major decision that can change your life forever. Another thing that stops us from looking to God is that we do not know the scriptures and so, as James said, uh, we carry unnecessary burdens and the weighted down issues of life when God wants to help us bear them. We work like slaves in our father's house because we do not know our identity. We labor and strive day in, day out for crumbs when God has already prepared a table before us. Matthew 11, verse 28, 30 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Christ came to the earth as man, lived as a man, and suffered as a man. And so the Bible tells us in Hebrews 4, verse 16, in James Version. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. In essence, God knows of all the troubles and the problems that beset us as human beings. He knows of our fears and worries and wants to ease us of them all. And then he has assured us that we will not be faced with temptation or challenges that are beyond our capacity. Even better is the promise that he will be there with us all these challenges. What exactly is that situation that you are going through? Is it barrenness? As the doctor said, you can never have children of your own. Have you tried all you can without results? It is time to look up to God when all else fails and your hope starts to wane. Go to God. Forget what people have said, what the economy looks like, what your current situation is like, and every other report that is not of God. Only God has the final say over your life and that situation. If he has not declared your case closed, nobody can. We most likely would be familiar with the story of the woman with the issue of blood. Whatever caused her condition or how it started, we do not know, but we do know that she was in that state for 12 years. For 12 years, she was constantly losing blood. Just imagine the effect on her life as a whole. Physically, she would have become lean and would be prone to other illnesses, being that she was constantly anemic. She would have to go to the hospital for frequent blood transfusions and spend on foods that can easily replenish her blood level. Financially, the Bible reports that she had spent all that she had on physicians but never got better. She rather grew worse. In other words, she became financially bankrupt. 
Moreover, her social life was at stake here. Most ladies find their monthly cycle inconvenient and exhausting. How do you think this woman felt with the unending flow of blood from her body? And she was like this for 12 years. Glory to God, she heard about Jesus and pulled her faith together. Heart in hand, she went ahead to touch the hem of his garment and became whole. God is sovereign and his decision is final. Once he shuts a door, no man can open it. And when he opens it, no man can shut it. The whole earth and everything within hangs on the power of his words. All power, might, wealth and riches belong to him. He is the almighty God and no force on earth can withstand his power. Why would you want to trust in your own efforts or that of other men around you when you have such a God as your father? Would you not rather make him your ally, look up to him in that situation and let him have the final say? Follow the instruction, Proverbs 3 verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and it will be well with you.